I got it. space, man. Like, what's really out there? How do we really know and what do we think we know we know? Like, what's really out there? How much can we actually say for certain we know what is out there and what is just on camera? I want to know. And yes, I started with this voice. Well, today I'm going to tell you all about what people are thinking and what is mysterious out there. Hi, Most Amazing Fam. My name is Abby, and today I'm sharing with you top 10 mysterious objects found in outer space. Oh, but first, I have a quick announcement. We have a contest going on, so cue party horn sound effect. You could win a signed most amazing t-shirt and two hundred dollars. Anyways, what do you have to do? How tough will this task be to win the contest? Well, mere moments will be taken from you, my friend. Go follow our Facebook page, like and comment on our video, guess that YouTuber challenge, and boom, you're entered. That's it. Easy peasy. And this contest will run until Thursday, December 5th, and the winner will be picked Friday, December 6th. So go on and enter. Now, on to the video. So I sorted this list into little components so it feels a little more cohesive. So let's start with what's on our planets. Now, number 10, a Pluto slug. Some people say Pluto isn't a planet or just a main planet anymore, just a dwarf planet. And to that, I say, no, no, Pluto is a real planet in my heart, okay? Anyways, on to what really matters. In 2016, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft got some nice pics of an icy region on Pluto's surface. If you look at the picture, there's like a little black formation in the center, and behind it is a trail. So it looks like a little slug has been making its way across the icy terrain, carving its own little path, making its way through this just desolate space. No, okay, I'm not crying because it's actually a slug, because it probably isn't. The scientists are saying it's likely a dirty block of water ice floating in a denser solid of nitrogen, so not a slug, but like it looks like it. It still is a mystery on what exactly it is, because that's more a hypothesis, you could say, but it is probably not a slug. But it doesn't stop me from thinking, like doesn't that sound like a nice children's book or something? The slug on Pluto, it'd be so cute. Like, that's all I'm thinking. On to number nine, the Mars spoon, question mark? So this is a much, much closer planet than Pluto, who is Still a planet in my heart. So this is Mars. So on a photo captured by the beloved NASA Curiosity rover, you can see what looks like a spoon, possibly? Like, it looks like a spoon, honestly. There's a handle, check. Mini concave element on the end of the handle, also check. Yes, it just looks like it's covered in dust because it's on the surface of Mars, which is, you know, a red, dusty planet, but Spoon, nonetheless. This was spotted by a YouTube user called UFO Hunter, which led to more people kind of agreeing and being like, yeah, it looks kind of like a spoon. From then on, more people were questioning, just like, yo, where did this spoon come from? Was a Martian eating an ice cream sundae before an entire Martian race was just wiped out? And so that's kind of what UFO Hunter was thinking, saying it may be left over from a lost civilization, but we could just be projecting our ideas onto a clump of space dust, honestly. What if, what if it's one of those things where you just touch it and it crumbles? Could be. I don't know. At number eight, fish rock. Is this another thing we could just be projecting? This fish looking thing spotted on Mars is probably just a rock, but we gotta remember, Mars once had an ocean even bigger than the Arctic Ocean. And even if it could be a rock, it probably is a rock. Look at the similarities to a fish. An upturned nose, a fin, and even a finned tail too. Have I ever caught a fish? No, and have I tried? Yes, but if I did catch one. I bet it would look like this, and I bet it would also be a rock that I was trying to convince people was a fish, but let's move on to number seven, face on Jupiter. So yes, let's hop on over to another planet, our big one in our solar system, the big old gas giant, Jupiter. And now this image shows what looks like a derpy looking face on the gas giant. It even has a lovely name. Wait for it. Jovi McJupiter face. Very nice, very cute. So this face was awarded that beautiful name by Jason Major, a citizen scientist who rotated a photo that NASA took. Now, NASA's Juno spacecraft sent down an unaltered photo and Major was like, no, 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 no. Let's interpret these two storms as eyes and the wider swirling red part as a mouth, which is genius. Now, Jovi McJupiter face obviously shows we can see the beauty in art in anything in nature and life. So now the next section that we're gonna be talking about is staying within the realm of our solar system, but going in a little closer, a little smaller. So let's take a peek at the moons we have. So at number six, we have Ravioli Moon. This delectable little treat of a moon is one of Saturn's moons. Its name is Pan, and yes, it looks like a little treat of ravioli. And ravioli gets tossed in a pan with butter oil, right? Does that blend the two names together enough for you? Connections. Fun. Anyways, the reason it looks like the pasta is because material from Saturn's rings falls onto Pan's equator, and the buildup results in the really unique buildup on the equator that makes me think, you know, ravioli. But maybe if you don't have food on the brain, you may think Pan looks more like a flying saucer. And in that case, right on. But for me, 
Ravioli. On to number five, Death Star Moon. The second and last of our honorable moon mentions is Mimus, or Mimus, aka the Death Star Moon. Now, this is another of Saturn's many moons, and this one garners a few more eyes because of its similarities to the Death Star from Star Wars. And you know, the big dish on the Death Star? Boom, big crater on Mimus. Is this really the Death Star in disguise? Probably not, since it's been orbiting Saturn for a bit. Plus, that idea was mainly for a fictional universe. Also, mainly, this moon is really big. So, Mimus is 396 kilometers in diameter, and the first Death Star and second Death Star were both between 160 and 140 kilometers in diameter. So if you're thinking, yeah, but what about the third Death Star? Well, that one's too big, measuring about 900 kilometers in diameter, so it's not that one either. So it's not the Death Star in disguise, so you can, you know, exhale and breathe a little bit. But it is a cool looking moon, so. Yep. Okay, so next up is not only out of this world, but also out of this solar system. The next three we have are nebulas, which if you don't know, are super cool on their own, even if they don't look like anything in particular, but these next three have the added X factor of looking just really cool. At number four, we have Horsehead Nebula. So this first nebula we're looking at was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope back in 2013. The stunning nebula got the nickname Horsehead Nebula because of its looks. Think back to cloud watching when you were younger and seeing the shapes in them, and you can see that this nebula looks like the head and neck of a horse in this image with the nose of the horse facing the left. And unfortunately, we can't pay this little horsey a visit because it's about 1,500 light years away from the Orion constellation. And for reference, Orion's constellation is 243 to 1,360 light years away from us, so little ways away, but you can still admire it for its beautiful looks. This next one, number three, is Space Crab. And so this one is quite a ways further. It's about 6,500 light years away from Earth, and it's the Crab Nebula. Now, let's look a bit more at this five-layered composite image of this bad boy. So the composite image, it, it looks like something out of a movie. One, stunning. And then again, two, the colors, magnificent, such range. Do I sound like I'm impersonating Jonathan Van Ness? Yes. It looks like an artist made it. It's beautiful. And yes, this nebula is called the Crab Nebula, because the range of its legs, so it said. But others have also compared these outstretchings to an octopus's tentacles. And so if you're having a hard time seeing these legs or arms that I'm talking about, look mainly at the pink sections and a little bit at the yellow, and I find it helps you paint a picture of what you're looking at. I am the nebula. On to another nebula, the Twin Jet Nebula, also known as a space butterfly. So this cosmic butterfly looking thing is actually a two-lobed nebula. It has the official name PNM2-9, and it was originally spotted back in 1947. It's more commonly known as the Twin Jet Nebula because really it looks like two jets coming out of the back of a rocket ship colliding into one another, and then the blasts radiating outwards. I feel like you could even argue it's two pop bottles head to head shrouded in like a green atmosphere. But then if you look right in the center, I say it looks like a fairy from Legend of Zelda, which looks a bit like a butterfly. So that's where you get the name Cosmic Butterfly. Mystery solved. The Twin Jet Nebula is obviously a fairy from Legend of Zelda. You're welcome. So our number one is the D&D asteroid. And obviously this one is my number one because I am a gamer. A tabletop role-playing gamer, that is. Asteroid 2017 BQ6 has been compared to dice used in playing Dungeons and Dragons and also other tabletop games because of its angular shape. And you kind of have to know that this is this is kind of odd, because most planets and stuff around space is rounded. Kind of looks like a bunch of either spheres or just potatoes passing through. And so this asteroid passed from a distance of about 1.6 million miles away, but it didn't, you know, land anywhere. Like, dice usually do. And like, if you think about it, there's already enough people thinking we are living in a simulation. But guys, what if we live in a game? One of their dice in the great unknown fell into space, and now they're laughing at us because we rolled a natural one on perception. A simulation game. You're thinking the Sims, I'm thinking, they're just dictating each of our lives with dice rolls. It's all up to random. Who knows? There you have it. Those are my top 10 mysterious objects found in outer space. And what do you think is like real? What do you think is really happening here? Also, do you think something could be more than it seems here? Anyways, that's been it. My name is Abby. I've been your host. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check us out on Facebook for that contest. And also check out the new channel, Top 10 Central. Eh? Till next time, stay spacey. <laughs> Keep doing this. I'm the slug making my way across an icy tundra with like solemn music in the background. It's like, that's the Titanic soundtrack. I digress. It's about 16, not 16. It's about six, it's about
Thank you.